Let's continue with the antiemetics now. We're going to be talking about um, a number of different classes of, of antiemetics, starting with corticosteroids. Um, decadron or dexamethasone is common. A methylprednisolone is another common corticosteroid. They're used for many things. Remember, we talked about some of these uh, steroids in terms of respiratory problems. But they also help relieve nausea and vomiting by unknown action. They uh, are used for, especially for chemotherapy. They, they work very well for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. They, but they have other effects that are important. If anybody has ever used a corticosteroid, uh, for example, prednisone for an asthma attack, <clears throat> you know that some of the side effects are very helpful. Um, it can cause mood elevation. It can cause an increased appetite. Sometimes the poison of eating way too much, but it also can make a sense of well-being. So these help reduce nausea and vomiting, and some of the other actions just kind of build on and, and help improve a person's um, view on life at a time when they could be having some really grave issues. If you're on chemotherapy, it's not good, obviously. So um, a corticosteroid may be very helpful. There are <clears throat> relatively few side effects in low doses and short-term therapy. The problem is when you use corticosteroids for long-term therapy, that's when side effects start to pile up. But in this situation, you're going to be giving them very short, very briefly, um, with minimal side effects. Some nursing considerations though, well if it's going to encourage appetite, what lab value might you want to watch? It can increase your blood glucose. So you might need to take that into consideration, especially if the person is diabetic. So uh, there are things you need to watch out for. It can also sometimes cause sleeplessness. So other, you know, th th those are things you just need to watch out for. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Antihistamines are another class of medications. Dimethhydronate, or Dramamine, is, is a common one, over-the-counter. Um, hydroxazine and Meclizine. These are all antihistamines. And like all antihistamines, they have some very similar side effects. Um, these reduce nausea and vomiting by blocking the action of acetylcholine and histamine. They have... Um, uh, <laughs> One of the major side effects can be profound sedation, especially Dramamine. Um, when it's used for motion sickness, it, it can put you to sleep right through the whole trip, which happened to me when I was in Jamaica and on the way there and on the way back, it happened to another student. These are also very useful for other things though. Um, some people get nausea and vomiting because they have an inner ear um, condition called Meniere's disease. This causes vertigo, and vertigo is, is dizziness, kind of a spinning feeling. So um, this is very helpful for that type of um, nausea and vomiting because that is actually almost uh, simulating motion sickness. These work best when they're given before the nausea and vomiting start. They don't do a whole lot once it's already there, but they're very good taken in advance to prevent it. Not all antihistamines work as antiemetics, but these four, or these three, work very well using, which, using their antihistamine and anticholinergic um, activities to help bring some uh, calm Side effect, the main one is going to be sedation. And like I said, it can be profound, especially if the person does not take a lot of antihistamines. Um, if you are sort of antihistamine naive, night-night, <laughs> it's just going to. Um, other anticholinergic type reactions, blurred vision, constipation, urinary retention, dry mouth, dry nose and throat. So what are you going to tell your patient if they're taking this? How are we going to treat the, like, the dry mouth? Hard candies work very good. 
make sure that you are able to sleep if you fall asleep. You're not going to want to take this if you need to be sharp and um, on, on top of everything. You're not going to take this if you're driving, obviously. So these are just, they're very common. They work very well when taken in advance. Anticholinergics, scopolamine. Most commonly used, in, uh, used as a patch, a scopolamine transdermal, scopolamine transdermal through the skin. Um, works very well, but it must be applied more than four hours before travel starts. Now, why would it take at least four hours? Because it's transdermal. It has to move from the little patch, and they're small. I mean, we're talking probably about the size of your thumbnail. It has to migrate through the skin and start working. Now, it really is nausea and vomiting, um, especially good for motion sickness. But again, it needs to, needs to build up in the system. And almost always, it's used right behind the ear. And these can be applied, and they stay on for uh, 72 hours, I believe. I used one when I was on a, on a uh, cruise one time. First time I'd ever been on a cruise, I was kind of worried. I get a little motion sickness in buses. Thought I needed it on the cruise. At some point it fell off when I was swimming or whatever. Never noticed it. Apparently buses and cruise ships are very different. But again, you're going to need to, need to give you the, just like your um, antihistamines, must be taken before you get sick. Can cannabinoid. Cannabinoid. Uh, where do you suppose this comes from? Yeah, cannabis or marijuana. Um, the medication dronabinol or marinol. Nobody, nobody really knows how it works, but it does work especially well with um, nausea and vomiting due to cancer chemotherapy. It also stimulates appetite just like the corticosteroids do. It has the same side effects that you would get if you smoked marijuana. It can cause temporal dissociation, in other words, you just lose track of time, depersonalization, dysphoria. It can cause tachycardia and hypotension. A very slow onset. Does not produce the same high as produced by as uh, smoking the marijuana, but it has similar side effects. There is very little uh, or, or no interest of this drug on the street in terms of a of a. Um, uh, diverted schedule three drug because it doesn't have the highs it only has the the more negative side effects but it is um, it is out there schedule three again meaning it has a you know more of a, a potential for dependence I've never seen that used but I've also never worked a lot on on an um, oncology floor. So that you would see that more for, with oncology patients. Benzodiazepines, we're going back to benzodiazepines again. Um, diazepam and lorazepam are, are very commonly used for this. Uh, they produce relaxation and they inhibit the central cortex input to the vomiting center. So these are working up in the brain. And um, Ativan is very commonly used for um, uh, anti-emetics. They decrease anticipatory nausea and vomiting before the administration of anti-cancer drugs. Anti-cancer drugs are very commonly known to cause nausea and vomiting. And if you think you're going to be taking a medication that causes nausea and vomiting, you probably will have nausea and vomiting because you think you will. Now, it could be the drug causing it. It could be your brain causing it. But either way, you've got it. If you use an Ativan or Lorazepam or Diazepam to produce relaxation, sometimes that can just take away the fear of nausea and vomiting and you experience no or, or less symptoms. It's a, it has a combination of effects. It includes you know, there's sedation with benzodiazepines, uh, decreased anxiety, uh, possible depression of the vomiting center, it also has a slight amnesic effect. Um, and this actually seems to be the most important when you're treating cancer patients. And so um, actually midazolam and lorazepam are better than diazepam. Diazepam 
Valium, diazepam, does not have the same amnesic effect as lorazepam or midazolam. The last category of, of uh, antiemetics is a prokinetic. Prokinetic, let's talk real quickly about that word. What does prokinetic mean? Pro means encourages, increases, um, promotes kinetic movement. So a prokinetic would be like uh, metoclopramide. And this increases the release of acetylcholine from nerve endings and it increases GI motility or GI movement and the rate of gastric emptying. Some people, their stomachs just don't move fast enough and the food sits in there, causes nausea and vomiting. We give metoclopramide and that speeds the motility. It, the stomach empties out faster and an empty stomach has less likelihood of causing nausea and vomiting. It's a dopamine receptor agonist um, and it relieves nausea and vomiting induced by, by uh, gastric retention of food and fluids. So again, you have a problem with, with food building up in your stomach for whatever reason, you'll give metoclopramide and have increased motility. So what do you suppose the side effects are? Well, sedation, restlessness, it could cause extrapyramidal reactions. It's contraindicated in Parkinson's disease. Because remember, this is a dopamine receptor antagonist. And Parkinson's is all about dopamine. And if, we're, if we have a, taking medication that is an antagonist to dopamine receptors, we're going to increase the symptoms of Parkinson's. About 30% of people um, develop extra, extra pyramidal reactions. So we'll need to watch out for those as we talked about in the most recent learning plan. And then we have emetics, not anti-emetics, but emetics. These are medications that encourage vomiting. Um, and the most common is Ipecac syrup. Um, this is used for, for when there's potential overdose in a conscious patient. Now it's not going, going to be used for everything. If a person ingests a corrosive substance, you're not going to give them an emetic to make them vomit up. Um, it's mostly for overdoses of drugs. It used to be recommended to keep at home for anything that may have happened and it's no longer recommended for routine home use. What you need to do, if you're in a situation where there's a potential overdose, you call poison control first they will tell you the next step. Um, the American Academy of Pediatrics does not routinely advocate keeping Ipecac anymore since 2003. It acts within 20 minutes. You may give repeat doses if need, need be and give with three or four glasses of water for adults. You really wanna distend the stomach. Stomach distension increases nausea, increases the uh, vomiting and increase the likelihood if there's medications in the stomach of actually flushing those medications out. So those are your antiemetics, all the antiemetics and one of your emetics. Come back and in the next section we're going to, going to be talking about constipation.